All right, we now welcome on to Inside TBT. Getting ready for his second year with Overseas Elite, Bobby Brown. Bobby, welcome to the show. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Happy to be here. It was good. Of course, we're happy that you're here. That we are happy as well that you <laughs> are here. Sorry, I stumbled over my words there a little bit. You know, first question, Overseas Elite has four titles under their belt. Do you think they add it, – it's not really fair to add a guy like you. What do you think? Uh, I mean, that's what they're, the team had every every season. They had firepower all over. Um, uh, Kyle Fogg and uh, CJ – I mean, uh, Eric McCullough. So, uh, I'm trying to, like, you know, fill that void, I guess. Uh, last year was my first year with the team uh, with Pargo and, and Kane and DJ and those guys. Um, and it was fun. And they, we talked about it. And uh, definitely they, you know, brought the team back. We didn't know if he was going to have a, a TBT this summer because of, you know, the corona. But uh, just me me being on the team, you know, that's just added, added scoring, added uh, – um, and plus I know how to play with those guys anyway. So uh, it makes life a lot easier for everybody. So it's safe to say that, you know, it's not because of you joining that they lost their first game, right? <laughs> no, it's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> and we talk about that all the time, like, man, we, 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 for joining our team, we lost, we lost our first game. I was like, nah, I couldn't even, I couldn't even play last time. My back was messed up. Um, but now, fully healthy, so we give it another run and try to get that five. So, if Overseas Elite is the is the Warriors of TBT, and mm -hmm. you were added kind of like as KD, KD, uh, <laughs> what does that make Joe Johnson? That's like at Michael Jordan <laughs> joining the Warriors. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, it is. Uh, he did say that uh, last year, we like the Warriors in the TBT and now uh, adding uh, me and uh, also Joe. And then we have another uh, another uh, surprise. I don't think it's been uh, revealed yet, but the TBT world will soon see that. Two, two new additions. So Whoa. We'll All right. We won't we won't make you spill any beans, um, but uh, we do want to know how what was your role in the recruitment? of Joe Johnson and others, but I mean, we really care about ISO Joe. What was, were you, were you leading the recruitment process? Pargo was, uh, Pargo called me and was like, yeah, Joe, Joe want to play. He trying to play in the TBT. And we was like, yeah, he played with us for sure. Uh, <laughs> that, that was an easy call. And uh, we got, you know, got his video, sent everything in. Now we all in a group chat, you know, talking amongst each other every day about, you know, the stuff that we got to go through to get to TBT and stuff like that. So he's been, he's been cool. Um, ever since, you know, recruiting him, that, that was so easy. Like, Parker was like, he want to play. He was like, everybody agreed. Easy, easy call. Yeah, sure, let's add, a, let's add an all-star to – an NBA all-star to the best team that the TBT's <laughs> ever assembled anyway. Sure. Yeah, that's so Joe, man. Bobby, you, uh, you've, you've been around the NBA. You, you've met a lot of people, got a lot of NBA friends. Were there any guys that you reached out to join Overseas Elite that told you no? Uh, no, no, none of them told me no. They just said, uh, you know, every, obviously a lot of people have been calling them to try to get them on teams. Um, but nobody said no. They said, maybe um, I'll get back to you. When's the deadline? Like, nobody said no. Oh, Bobby, that's a nice way of saying no. You know that. Yeah, are, they no. the, are they on the team? Are they on the team? You're going to see. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Right. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. That's fine. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. We're see. So, so are you working on it? For, for those of you that don't know, Bobby has his own clothing line. Are you working to get a uh, your company patch on the Overseas Elite jerseys? That would be dope. Um, I definitely uh, – I always – you know, every summer – last year was the first time, you know, with that team, and I brought them all some merch of mine. Um, and every summer they're like – I've been giving them stuff all throughout the season. But that, that would be – that would be uh, that would be dope to have that on there, but if not, you know, I got some stuff I can just give it out anyway. So yeah, you'll uh, just just warm up in the shirts regardless. Who cares? Up in it, it'll look like it's overseas league. What your ones look like? So <laughs> we'll see this summer how it go. What um? Go ahead, Joe. Uh, you you were talking about the group chat you guys are all in. What kind of shape are you guys in? Are you guys ready to roll? Have you guys had opportunities to? Uh, I'm sure not play together, but get in some sort of gyms. No, everybody. I mean, everybody is uh, in their you know, respective cities, working out, lifting weights, getting in the gym whenever they can. Um, I'm fortunate to have access to a gym um, here in L.A., a uh, weight room and a gym so where we can play 
two on two, um, get some full court action in. Um, we just recently started doing that, but a lot of the other guys, they've been doing the same. Um, and everybody looked like they've been in shape, um, you know, working out, whether it's you know, playing one on one or two on two. I mean, obviously, we're not going to get a chance to practice with each other until we get there, but uh, I think everybody will be in, in shape by, by, you know, when we play July 9th. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely safe to say that uh, a team like you guys, you, you number one, you don't have to worry about the other guys being in shape because you guys are all pros, pros. But then also the chemistry is just, I mean, it's a, it's a foregone conclusion because of, you know, what we've already seen in the past. Is that just – do you guys even talk about how you're going to mesh on the court or is that just a wait and see type of deal? No, that's the way everything worked out. I mean, last year we, you know, we went to Richmond. It was everybody's first time. You know, it was a brand-new team except for JB, DJ, Kane. Uh, they all been together in Parko. You know, they all been together. And once the other new guys came in, we all just kind of jailed. Uh, everybody stuck to, you know, what they brought to the table. Um, and it was easy. Uh, I think it's going to be easy again this year because everybody's experienced. Everybody, you know, been on teams where they can score 40 or, you know, be the man. But now we got a gang of guys that got a specific role. You know, we got to win, what, four games. Yeah, we've seen we've seen uh, players in the past put nicknames on the back of their jersey. You know, oh. S- Jared Sullinger had Sully on his Sully. jersey instead of Sullinger. Maybe we'll get ISO Joe on the back of Joe Johnson's. What are the chances <laughs> we get uh, downtown Bobby Brown on the back of your jersey? I mean, if it can fit on the back, I'll get it. <laughs> uh, definitely ISO Joe, that nickname is cold, so. Maybe he would do that. He had it in a in the big three, right? Yeah, I yeah. I think I have a little uh, vendetta against Joe Johnson because he stole my nickname. I was ISO Joe before him, so. Oh, were ISO Joe first? No, I, I mean not really. <laughs> but... <laughs> right, so I need to see some video. <laughs> what happens yeah. if your What happens if your name is Joey and you're like a post up player? What's your nickname? Yeah, I don't think you get one for being a post up player. Yeah, I don't you think know. so. Yeah, they, they have, called me – in college, they just called me Joey Buckets. So, that's pretty self Joey, Joey Buckets is a good name, too. They called me Bobby Buckets in uh, Houston. Hey, Ooh. there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's, so, that's good. That's that's a very self-explanatory nickname. It, it took me a long way. So, I was a big big fan <laughs> of that nickname. When you played in Houston, you played with uh, with James Harden. Yeah. Were you surprised to ever get get the ball? Uh, <laughs> what? Not really because – you know, playing with him in the summer in the Drew League, like I know like how he plays and I know what spots to be in. So it never, it never, you know, stood me off to be like, oh, he never going to pass the ball. You know, he just got to be in the right area when he has the ball. Obviously, he plays one-on-one the whole game. You know, that's their offense. But uh, whenever I play with him, I found my way. What's he like in practice compared to in the games? Oh, it's the same. He goes hard. Um, he treats every practice like a game. Uh, he's first in, last to leave. Um, you know, he's always working on new stuff, like, every day. And uh, I've never seen nobody that, you know, led a game of basketball and, like, want to play and compete in the game and uh, in practice. So, uh, him and, like, Chris Paul are definitely those type of guys who, who love the game of basketball and they play in their sleep. Is uh, his step back a travel? Uh, sometimes, <laughs> but he gets away with it, so. Yeah, only him, right? <laughs> Only him, yeah, for sure, because it's hard to read those feet. His his footwork is crazy. Yeah, and then the other – my best take about James Harden is he has the most underrated celebration in the history of basketball. <laughs> when he dunks and covers his nose like his nose is bleeding. His nose is bleeding, yeah. I mean, that's just – every time I remember I'll be watching with my dad or something, and he'll be like, oh, my God, did he hit his face on the rim? Like, it's like, no, Dad, every time that's his celebration, and it <laughs> never so fails. Good. So funny, man. We first start doing it. We like, man, you ain't even getting that high, man, to begin with. That's I hard, think if Dirk, like if Dirk did that, it would be so funny, you know? Yeah, because he can't jump. Yeah, exactly. Well, this is what I think. I think the impact of dunking for him is similar to the impact of when Meta World Peace elbowed oh, him yeah. as hard as possible in the yeah. head. So he's yeah. just thinking, oh, if I got that hard <laughs> of impact, my nose must be bleeding. That was crazy. I don't know what Meta was thinking when he did that. Have you ever uh, lost your cool like that in a game? I have, in China. Well, can we get that story? 
I have. Um, I lost my cool a lot of times in China. I mean, because just the, the style of play, how they play out there is like, you know, if the guy's going off, try to take him out or try to, you know, play dirty and, you know, do dirty things. But uh, a guy hit me. My foot was messed up and I went to the basket. He, like, stuck his foot out on purpose. And I, like, he hit my foot that was injured, tripped and fell, got up, and I, like, pushed him. Um, and then the referees, you know, broke it up, everything. But it was a lot that of that. Going like this. <laughs> <laughs> he started acting like I killed him when I pushed him. I'm like, all right, man. Did you – your game probably is made for that Chinese league, right? Oh, for sure. Um, and it was like an adjustment coming from uh, when I played EuroLeague in Siena. Because that next year I went to China, and it was like, okay, this is how we're going to play. We score every time. You know, but I was I was fortunate though. My teammates were, were, were pretty good. Uh, that's, that's that's hard to come by over there playing with um, the Chinese. Do you remember the most threes you've ever had in a game? The most threes I made, yeah, I remember. Uh, I made fourteen in the Drew League, and then I made uh, twelve. Oh, that college. doesn't count. Drew League yeah, doesn't does. count. Yeah, it does. I made 12 in college. Twelve in college. Who was the game against? Uh, who did we play? Bethune, Bethune Cookman. That's got to be a record, right? For your for your yeah. school. Yeah. I've never. I mean, when our I've never heard of anyone ever yeah. making twelve threes in in a game. Yeah. I made twelve and I made ten and eleven during that season. Well, last year you had a game in the TBT where you hit like four threes from one step inside <laughs> a half court. When you get going like that, whether it's you can shoot from anywhere or you're making a 1,000 in a row, do you feel like you're in a zone or are you just choosing to shoot more? No, I definitely feel like I'm in a zone. If I see one or two go in, the next one is, the next three is definitely going up. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's been my motto, especially now getting older, uh, being able to shoot the ball. And then I started, you know, shooting it from further because, you know, people don't play defense out there. So it's like, all right, I'm going to just shoot it from here. Is, so I try to practice that as much as possible. In the, I don't know how aware you are of the TBT rosters this year, but there are like seven elite shooters. Like that's like a new theme this year. You know, like yeah. Carmen's crew has John Diebler, but then this year they've added guys like Fletcher McGee, all-time leading NCAA three-pointer. Yeah. Bill Forte, who obviously he shoots from the parking lot also. Bryce Do Brown. Think, do you think that you are the best shooter in the TBT? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of, like you just said, it's a lot of good shooters out there. We just gonna have to see, you know, when uh, the game's on the line to see who, who, who can, uh, who can outshoot who. <laughs> Wait, you cut out for a second. Did you say, yes, you are, and everyone else sucks? I think that's what you said. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> no. can, we, can we assume that if there's a three-point contest, you'll be in it? I'm definitely going to be in it. Uh, I was in my first three-point contest this past season in Greece, um, uh, ever, and I won, and it was like, you know, it was a great experience because I'd never been in a three-point contest. Did the winner get a rack of lamb euro? <laughs> no, we had some after the game, though. <laughs> oh, man. I remember my first three-point contest, obviously, being Joey Buckets. Like, you know, I, I'm a good yeah, shooter. Yeah, for um, sure. My first three-point contest was in high school. And uh, we were playing for uh, the regional championship, which is a big deal in Illinois. Uh -huh. and we play, my, the three-point contest was right before the game. I literally could care less about the three-point contest. I was like, let's just get to this game. I'm, like, really nervous. Like, I've never been nervous for, for a game like this. And I went, like, five for 15. And my best friend, who, who was also on the team but didn't play, like, he kind of stunk. Shout out to Dunn. Um, he won. So He won so, a What? He said he won the three-point contest? Yeah, he won and advanced to the, to the state finals or whatever. So, like, I was like, okay, if I'm going to lose, at least it's to him. But, like – it's so funny how people – I remember my, my friends were all like, what happened? And I was like, I, dude, I don't even remember being in the three-point contest. We got, a, we got a game to play. Right. Get but, this over. Kind of play. Yeah. But then, you know, it, I got better. I won in college, so that's all that matters. Yeah, that's where college. I got the game from that one. <laughs> Bobby, going back a little bit to uh, – I love saying your name, by the way, Bobby. Going back, uh, <laughs> going back to, you know, you spent a lot of time in the NBA – are there any NBA players that you played with that you think would – well, I mean, most of the NBA players would, would be able to dominate in TBT. But is there any one specifically whose game really would work for TBT? 
game who will work for TBT. I think Montrez would destroy the TBT. Ooh, that's Montrez, a good answer. Montrez Harrell. Um, Lou Will, for sure. Uh, who else would dominate? How about guys that you'd like to see in it who who aren't in the NBA, aren't in TBT, but can still – be- Nick Young? That's that's our that's that's our vote. Him and yeah. Jr. Smith would, would would dominate, right? Jr. too. Jr. and Nick Young for sure would dominate. As a matter of fact, I need to I need to uh, <laughs> I need to make a call real quick after this after this. Would you would you do a live recruitment of Nick Young right now on the podcast? That would be hilarious. Would you? Would he? I don't even know what he's doing right now. You trying to play in the TVT? I'm gonna call him right now. Hold on. Yeah, call. All right, let's see if he answered the phone. If he says something wild, we'll cut it out. Don't worry. If he doesn't answer, think of someone else, then we could call. (laughs) What is this song he got on his phone? Hello? Nick Young. What up? What's up, Nicholas? What you doing, man? You trying to you trying to play the TBT? <laughs> what y'all playing though? Man, don't. Who, who, where are we playing in Ohio? I'm playing, nigga. I'm playing. Are you gonna I'm play for real? Yeah, I'm gonna play for real. Play. So if we get we ask you for the video, you gonna send the video? Send the video, okay? Nick Young is gonna play with us. Man, you seen who on my team on my IG, man. <laughs> Everybody gonna show up, man. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna sure, text you. Sure. I'll send me the video. For sure, for sure. Uh, uh, man, he ain't gonna play. <laughs> <laughs> if you send the video, we got Nick Young on our team, and y'all the first to see it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Breaking news. On Inside TBT, uh, Nick Young, uh, no chance he plays, but he just said he's going to play. <laughs> according according to Bobby Brown's sources, that he's no chance he plays, even though we just heard that he's going right. to play. He said he's going to play. We'll see. Bobby, that was, that was pretty easy to get you to make that phone call. You want to see what James Harden's up to? <laughs> <laughs> hey, James, you trying to play the TBT? He's going to say beat it. No way. <laughs> So, who of your uh, former NBA teammates would you say you're still the the closest with? Uh, definitely James, CP, Trev. Obviously, is my best friend. I talk to him every day. Uh, Pat, Pat Bev, and Trez. I talk to them a lot. All of my guys, especially they are out here in LA. So, uh, I have uh, I have a very funny Patrick Beverly story. Pat um, Bev. Oh yeah, he from he from Chicago. Yeah, so we work out at the same gym. Uh, when I was back when I was in my prime, uh, <laughs> don't work out there anymore. Um, but he always obviously got the individual attention. You know, I was with two or three of my buddies working out. Um, and, and this was like strength and conditioning, not basketball. And yeah. uh, there was one day where he was in there um, doing curls and, uh, and tricep extensions. And every rep he did, this was right after they lost. Uh, shoot, might have been, you might have been on the team too and lost the Warriors in the conference finals. He was, mm-hmm. Every rep, he was going, Steph Curry, Steph Curry, Steph Curry. <laughs> and I looked over at, at his trainer, who was also working out us, and, he, and I said, he looked at me and said, this mf is insane. <laughs> yeah, everything is, everything. It was, and definitely, like, uh, just those battles with him in practice, and it, that's how hard he goes. You know? He got his own, you know, way of working. That's Pat, for sure. Bulls Can you imagine? For a reason. Can you imagine how frustrated someone would be if they're showing up to their TBT game and they see Patrick Beverly oh, is going to be guarding them? <laughs> They'll be pissed. Oh, what's <laughs> worse? But I don't even want to ask you this, but it's kind of like Aaron Kraft guarding you. Is that not? I I went. I played at Ohio State, so I, that's my Patrick Beverly. Yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to bring too much up about Carmen's crew. The, the team that's giving you guys your only loss, you know. I was there. I was on the I was on the bench. I'm your grip tonight. Went between Kane's legs and he picked it up and laid it up. I never seen nothing like that. That might be that's 
that's one that's probably the highlight from last year's tournament but I mean like how does that not get played more like in the I don't know. He he's unbelievable because the dude is is the Brett Favre of the TBT, where he's just retiring and going to med school, but now he's back, and then he's going yeah. to Italy. just he's unbelievable. But this is actually his last year, so you'll be you'll you're lucky. You might only you might not even have to face him again. Yeah, we're gonna see. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting. Bobby, Bobby yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. ask you a really annoying media question. You ready? Last year against Carmen's crew, did Carmen's crew win the game or did you guys lose the game? We lost. <laughs> we Good lost. We came, we came back and cut the lead down, and the ball went between Kane's legs, and he got the ball and laid it out. I never, that's why I said that's, if Kane would have just kicked the ball or anything, like anything could have happened in that situation, but it just popped out and he laid it up and scored a game over. Have you seen – that Aaron, I, I would imagine you haven't, but he has a highlight tape called like the Iron Man of college basketball, where it's just him diving for loose balls and like running into. It's on YouTube. Yeah, it's something. It's it's like Cinderella Man by Eminem is the soundtrack, and it's got some it's got some real basketball highlights, like him making threes and stuff. Um, no, but like no. there's he he there's one play against Michigan State where it's like an out of bounds. And the ball's just dribbling around. Someone picks it up, is about to pass it to someone for a layup, like right under the hoop. And he full out Superman dives on it, <laughs> intercepts it, lands on it, gets clearly gets the wind knocked out of him, calls timeout, and just lays on his back for like thirty seconds. I gotta watch it. It's on YouTube. But I type in, just type his name in. Yeah, you just Aaron Kraft college basketball highlights. You, you'll laugh because it's that's you'll be like, okay, now I understand why that ball went through his legs and he got it later in because it just <laughs> that's what happens when you play Aaron Kraft. Man. Bobby, so you guys got a you guys got a buy to the round of sixteen, and you play the winner of Armored Athlete and Power of the Paw. And Power of the Paw is a Clemson alumni. How much do you know about those two teams? How much are you scouting right now? Um, I haven't. Uh, we're uh, should we, obviously we're about to have to start. Um, I don't know who's on either team. Um, I don't think we. Not, I never played against either one of those teams in the TBT, even when I was with. Uh, my own team when I play, um, but we definitely gonna look at, look into it and then check the things. I know our coach is probably putting together some stuff for that. Once we get down there, he's pretty uh he's pretty ain't know about that. He always have like scout reports, shit like that. I'd be like, oh okay, <laughs> let's get it going. There's a reason why you guys are are the elite of the elite of the TBT. Nah, yeah, we 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 definitely watch. We definitely see who we playing against. We know. That's good. Well, Andrew is a free agent. For TBT fan fandom, oh, so bro. so you got to convince him because you know where my allegiance is. But you got to convince him of why he should be rooting for overseas elite this year in the tournament. Why? Yeah. He should be, okay. Tell he us. Not rooting? He's I not, have not. not I have not. He, I have not decided who I'm rooting for this summer. But oh, I want to root for the champs. So what do you got for me? Oh uh, yeah, I mean. You definitely should do that because, you know, we got we got all the ammo. We got experience. Uh, we got some winners, a lot of winners on the team. That's one on the highest level. So we're going to try to mix all that in and get another one. But you definitely should be rolling with the, with the Warriors. As far as uh, pump-up speeches go, that's pretty weak, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, do you guys take disrespect to uh, not being the number one overall seed? I know Carmen's crew is the defending champs, but in terms of championships, it's four to one. Yeah. Uh, not really. I mean, we're just going to get on the court and just win four games. That's how we try to see it. We try to look at it one game at a time. Don't matter about the seeding. It's all the same. Okay. I, I, no, no doubt about that. The, that's why they <laughs> play the games. That's what a, a lot of man once said. Yep. Bobby, before we uh, before we wrap things up, do you have any questions for Joey and I? Anything at all? We may know more than you about TBT. We may, may know something that is about to happen that's going to scare overseas elite. But any questions that you have, we can answer them. Or any questions not about the TBT? If you if you're if you're curious about anything, we're we're here to answer some questions. We got time for you. No, I mean I'm pretty. Sh- I know. What's, I mean, you know what's going on as far as the TVT and the like. Everything we got to go through to get there, and taking the tests and everything. But um, personally, both of y'all, we need to have a shootout, three point shootout. 
Oh, please. Please. Uh, you know you know you're looking at the Metro Media Jam. Hey, Jam. Said, Joey Buckets, and I want to see, you know, what your three ball look like, and I'm going to bring some stuff for y'all too, man. Perfect. Bobby, awesome. we got to tell you, so NBA All-Star Weekend, there was a uh, Metro by T-Mobile media jam for media <laughs> in the area. And we're Joey and I – What is that? What happened? What happened? Joey and I got to be in it, okay? And it was, it was, two, it was two events. The first event was like you get 50 seconds or a minute to shoot from all over the court. Certain spots are worth certain points. And one of the things you had to do was shoot over Taco Fall. Oh, wow. So I won that event. But then that was seeding for the final round, which was knockout. <laughs> and Joey and I got to the final two of knockout, but then the college basketball vet got the best of me. So we were the final two, and Joey was crowned the champ, but we were the Metro Media Day. Oh, did y'all think? Oh, yeah. yeah. It, oh, okay. It, to be fair – if you saw the competition we were playing against, you wouldn't be very impressed. But, <laughs> but I, all I know is that I have a gigantic purple basketball trophy in my room now. So, Oh, yeah. You mean you did what you had to do. You won. Yeah, so. Still, still got to make the shots, you know? No matter who it was against. Yeah, you know he's, he's talking about a trophy, that thing you don't have from the TBT yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get one for sure. All right, no, that's a no, challenge. Sure. Oh man! Well, Bobby, we we appreciate you coming on. Um, we appreciate you trying to to buy us with some gear. That's big time because we we can be bought. There's no doubt about that. So you definitely gained some more fans in us, and and we will be rooting for Overseas Elite. There's no doubt about that. Oh uh, yeah, appreciate it, man. Hopefully we'll see you. In, get we'll see you in the Young. round of sixteen. Oh yeah, Nick Young. We got to get Nick Young. <laughs> <laughs> he about to text me right now. All right, thanks, man. All right, man. Y'all take care. You too.